we're live. So maybe that week of the 16th. Yeah, so I'm working my internship that whole week. Okay. So like, what time for you? Well, I usually work 7.30 to 4.30, but I can leave or whatever. Like, they don't care how long I work or whatever. Okay. Like, if I have to leave or whatever during that week, that's fine. Like the 16th or 17th is what I'm thinking. Yeah. I just had stuff like, like on the 17th and the 18th. I really appreciate it. Or 16th or 17th. That's fine, but uh, I think I heard enough to say that's quote. Maybe 18th. We will go ahead and um, um, not we everybody here. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, uh, committee of the whole meeting. Let's jump. We'll start with Parks and Rec, and we're going to take up um, um, out of the gate here, probably because it'll be pretty painless. We can check it off the list. Is um, resolution 19-545, the Parks and Recreation fee changes, and it's a, they're, they're small changes, but probably so the whole group understands. So, if you want to come forward, ladies, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey, Sharon, would you mind pressing that, uh, the red button right there? There we oh, go. That Perfect. helped. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, in front of you, you have the current um, parks resolution and also the proposed resolution. We have three changes to the resolution that was adopted in April 2018. The first one being the adult softball program. We would like to drop the non-resident fee. And in doing that, we would like to then raise the entry fee to from $360 to $400. And the reason for that is um, removing the non-resident fee will make the online process much smoother and less errors. And the surrounding communities do not charge a non-resident fee for their adult softball program. That being Kentwood, East Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids, and Wyoming, none of those charge a non-resident fee. And then by raising the team rate, that will offset the difference that we would um, in losing some of those um, non-resident fees. Okay, and then the third one is the community park pavilion. We'd like uh, currently, our rental is $50 for a resident and $100 for non-resident. We would like to raise Community Park to uh, 70 and 120. That park is um, used twice as much, rented twice as much as Alpine or City Central. It has twice the space and there is updated electrical, um, more picnic tables, I'm just more there than the other two parks have. And then lastly would be um, to remove the adult uh, girls softball program from the resolution that we haven't had that program for a couple years now. So we take that right out of the resolution. Is there any other, any questions? <laughs> Commissioners? Sure. <laughs> what, raising the, Adult softball, the four hundred dollars per team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are we still going to be competitive with the other community? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. They range. Um, I know. Um, where is it? Kentwood is exactly four hundred dollars for eight games. Range anywhere from forty-two dollars to fifty-five dollars um, per game. So we would be at fifty dollars per game. Okay. And then. <clears throat> The large gathering permit, over 50 people, mm -hmm. in addition to above fees, administrative fee, may, how many people can I have? How many people can I have? I'm going to have a hash bash or something, and I have filled the Good fire. question. We don't have yeah, any cutoff. It usually is approved through the city management. So then you draw a line. You, But if I come in and said I wanted a large <laughs> gathering, 50 people, and I end up with more, it's going to... Yeah, there's no way to regulate that. You okay. say you get... 
Yeah, if they say they're having 50, then we just hope Hopefully they're being honest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How do we compare to um, other large gathering permit prices, like other townships or cities? Do you know what they charge? For they they charge right around that 150 to 200. Yeah, okay. right around there. Yeah, but um, we we always we did this last year. We're going to possibly propose it, and we are pretty pretty in the ballpark with what we charge. Um, a lot of the communities, um, depending on the pavilion and its size as to what they charge. So that's kind of what we would like to propose. Is that booked up? Does that get used a lot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the community was reserved 61 times okay. this past season compared to Alpine was only 22 times and City Central was only used 34 times. Okay. Is, do they have like rain, uh, you know, if there's like a in current weather, do they have like a... Rain policy? Yes. Like a, Thank you. Um, rain policy. They can, um, for a full refund, 48 hours in advance, they can cancel. But um, if the weather is a factor, then we just, um, they can reserve it another date. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, commissioners? No. I think you've done no. your homework. It's very reasonable, so I think we'll be fine. All right. Thank Good. you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. All right. Next on the list, let's jump. Um, we have Steve and Scott here, so let's. Uh, uh, we'll jump. Scott, I'm not sure if you want to do hit the uh, consumers <coughs> one first. Yeah, if we could hit Northridge first. Steve's okay. got another appointment in Ada, so I was hoping to uh, knock that off. So what you have in front of you is. Uh, uh, sanitary sewer and a water main finance agreement through Grand Rapids and these are very standard when we're using system funds um, the the sanitary sewer finance agreement is for $165,000 uh, the water main agreement is for $300,000 um, we're essentially borrowing that money from the system the system gets paid back when development occurs out there um, I think one of the things I wrote in your report is they get paid back at the current uh, average cost of construction so it's kind of like an inflationary uh, component is built in so that rate today is in the hundred forty dollar range if some if development doesn't occur for five years I'm gonna guess that's gonna be in the hundred and seventy hundred eighty dollar a foot range so the system gets its money back eventually it's not dollar for dollar but it's a it's a fairly equitable system and this is a good way for us to put these utilities in and and kind of complete those systems while we build the uh, the connectivity with Northridge uh, Grand Rapids has already approved the agreements, which is a little rare. We usually go first, um, but with not having a meeting for Veterans Day, um, they were courteous enough to take it up first. Commissioner's questions, dialogue? So that's a road project. We'll get our money back eventually. For the sewer and water. Well, actually for all of it, but that's a whole, I guess that's that, another topic to come up later. Okay. Related to sewer and water, we'll get the, the frontage back. Necessity. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right, Scott. Anything else you want to uh, touch on on the list here? Um, you know, maybe related. If anybody has any questions that are road related, um, related to the special assessment district, that might be. This might be a good time because Steve will be here and he can answer any questions. And I'll, you know, it's also a nice informal time to handle that. So, if there are questions about the project itself, this would be a great time for that. You're talking just north of Ridge, though. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's, we're going to put the money out there, but eventually through the special assessment, I'll come back. That's not going to go to the city of Grand Rapids. That'll come back to us. Correct. And I don't know if Daryl wants to touch on that or if you want to <coughs> get for into that. For the road that. itself or for the uh, utilities? The, the road itself? Yeah, Dan, maybe I can help by summarizing how it'll all be uh, budgeted. So you've got uh, three parts to the project, three funding parts. Um, one part will be the sanitary sewer system fund, one part will be the water main system fund, and one part will be the special assessment district. And the special assessment district will primarily just cover the road and the storm sewer. Okay. It will not cover the utilities, it won't cover consumers energy or AT&T or anything like that. It also won't cover any regional detention. Those things will happen when development occurs later on. So the SAD that you're gonna that we're gonna talk about later just covers the road. 
So eventually, like the water sewer, we may put 165,000 in it, but down the road it may come back at 190,000. But it's going to come back to the system and and a payment. And then the other, we're going to once they they start construction or whatever, we're going to get our money back. That's correct. So all three of those, it's a, we'll, we'll get our money returned. That's correct. Yeah. Eventually, now on the road, right. road construction, we'll have to upfront all that money until the property changes hands and sells, and we will get that property back. But the utility money up front will come from the system, so we won't have to fund that. And the Grand Rapids will put that out, and then they'll receive the, the payment for the utility, so that'll kind of come off the project cost from the city side. So basically, a special assessment is going to pay the expenses. Yes. So, sounds like a good plan to me. And I think uh, it's probably worth pointing out the project is ready to bid. Um, Steve's team has done a great job of getting it ready. In fact, they're they're poking us more than we're poking them. You know, saying, "Are you guys ready to bid it?" Because this is a really good time to bid it. But we have to get the property acquisition underway, and we're working on the final terms of the uh, purchase agreement uh, with Schwalier. And once that's signed, then I think we have the level of comfort we need to move forward and bid this out while the economy allows for good pricing. And then the other item on the agenda tonight, also related to Northridge, is the consumer's energy easement as well. So I don't know if you want to touch on that. It's part of the, another part of this project, really four items related to Northridge tonight. Yeah, if, if Jeff was here, he'd probably cringe a little bit and say this was a really painful process to go through. I mean, there's been a lot of back and forth trying to get the approval to, to put this road across consumer's energy's property. Um, they're a big agency, and they think very differently than we do about a lot of things. So it's challenging, but Jeff's done a really good job of... Uh, making sure that our critical needs are satisfied in this easement. And, and really those critical needs are underground sanitary sewer, water main, and storm sewer. Um, we were not able to get approval for some of the other telecommunications type things and gas main and, and those kinds of things. But those agencies, those uh, private utility companies will have to come in later and do that uh, when this whole development occurs at some future point. So I think there's some, Jeff's given us a little, a few warnings, but he's also said, this is the best we're going to do. I think you should take this deal. So basically we're just dealing for the city and the utility company's got to come in and deal for themselves. Un unfortunately, I think in a perfect world, we would make this pure right of way. And then those utilities could come into our right of way. And as you know, too, we always get a 10 foot private utility easement alongside of new roads so that those utilities can get just outside of the road. And in this case, they wouldn't allow it. In fact, they wouldn't even allow us our normal 86 feet for an industrial road. They would only give us 66 feet. Um, so we're, we're squeezed pretty tight there. Um, but those other agencies have a good relationship with Consumers Energy, too. Um, they're also very big organizations, and they know how to work with them to get approvals later. So basically, we're going to have utilities under the road? We'll have our utilities under the road, ours being walkers in Grand Rapids. And then the others will be outside behind the sidewalk. Uh, however, they work that out. Okay. Well, can't think. Be nice to have it out of the road, but oh well. All right. Any questions for Steve while he's here are related to the project or not? But I think Scott summarized really the four requests related to Northridge that Steve's uh, orchestrating. So. Or Ada Township. I can answer questions on Ada Township as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So the road's going to be black, the curb's going to be gray. <laughs> Grass is <laughs> green. Pretty standard stuff. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Do you want to move on to the Walker Avenue? Water main finance agreement. You might as well. That's for the other consent okay. agenda item, Mr. Mayor. Yep. No. Please. So, as part of our Walker Avenue bridge removal, um, there's a significant amount of water main there that needs to be removed and both lowered and raised um, because of the significant grade change, as you might imagine, with a bridge and a railroad crossing. Um, when we go back and put that all together at the same elevation, uh, a lot of that water main's got to come out. So. Um, Price tag is not as bad as we thought it was going to be. It's about $215,000, which is a lot of money, but it's not uh, as significant as when you think about the footprint of our of our project there. Um, but the, what this is going to do is put the water main at the proper elevation for the future grade so it can be serviced, so that we know it's safe, so we can take care of it, 
and also so that we know it's new so we're not building over perhaps a piece of 40 year old water main that's now 25 feet deep um, so this is kind of part of our due diligence and making sure that this project uh, is going to fit for a long time and I think overall in the scope of the project itself by not replacing the bridge and bringing this down to grade the cost savings we have is in the millions of dollars so that this is I, I think in the big picture of things we're in a good spot still yeah it, it makes a lot of sense yeah. and you know Scott I'm going to disagree with it coming out of the system I feel it's part of the construction project and it should be paid with construction funds I just uh, yeah and we can do that if you guys wanted to do that you could pay for it from city funds um, the system's just been a tool that we've used in the past to help d uh, defray that a little bit and that's where we are today I mean it, so a construction project to benefit to everybody that uses that road or people in the city but the water People with a water bill are paying that two hundred fifteen thousand dollars back. Not everybody, so that's why I bring it up. <clears throat> Any questions, dialogue, commissioners? Going once, going twice. All right. Next on the list, Mr. Connors. Powering through it. Is it the special assessment itself? Um, whatever you want to whatever the mayor wants to do if there's any questions on the expenditures or if we want to talk about the special assessment you might as well if, you, if there's any more questions on that Scott yeah you know we've we've talked an awful lot about this and what you have uh, you have two items related to the special assessment district you have a, a cover memo or supporting memo from me and then you have the special assessment language itself from Jeff and the cover memo for me maybe it, it, a good way to put this is um, it takes the previous discussions and justifications that we've had and just puts them on the record um, because you know we've talked about the continuity we've talked about the long cul-de-sac redundant the need for redundant access the water main looping um, and I think lastly the, the fact that there's a precise plat out there so all of that work has already been done to kind of build that case and so the memo basically just puts that on the record for all of us so that it's clear um, for the special assessment that it's there the special assessment district itself is really just step one um, in, a, in a multiple step program uh, to find a financing source for the project so this one basically just says you intend to have a special assessment district after this meeting we prepare costs and bids and things like that and then we begin to go through a couple of other meetings that we may or may not have to go through in detail depending on how the purchase agreement works out um, but it's step one to say yes we want to have a special assessment Darrell may want to add something to that too it's um, no we talked about having Jeff here but we said boy it's so easy yeah I think just this reflects the discussion we've had previously and in, in other sessions about the acquisition of the property and it's just kind of a necessary step of the process and um, our agreement with the Schwaliers will pretty much exempt them it'll be the future property owners I believe is how that's uh, structured so as the property develops as they pass it on that's when we will get the paybacks And that deferment could be six months or it could be 16 years um, that's the awkward part of what we've kind of done here is we've agreed that if if they truly want to continue farming then that deferment will last as long as they own it and continue to farm but if either they change ownership or if they decide not to farm and to develop then the special assess assessment starts Questions, dialogue around it. Now it's first time for some. Okay. Okay. We're good. Anything else we need Scott for tonight? I got. I just the blame right away. What is all that? How does something between Blaine and Meyer? I'm still trying to. It's, state highway right away that's a visionary thing that Frank has been kind of spearheading and he might be best to kind of <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out sure. how to, how's the city end up in this um, they need a lawyer to pay the bill, no, 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 bill? mr. mayor you want me to uh, <laughs> sure. paint the picture no. a little bit I, I think the, the the big thing is part of this if we can have really open minds around this this is 
Um, thinking big picture here, it's mitigating some of the traffic impact at the intersection um, is, is what we're trying to do here. So that's a, that's a justification. And the action is um, as these projects come in, we reevaluate um, how we can make things better in a variety of ways, and one of which is always traffic management. As the mayor said, we know we run up against um, peak hour and weather related congestion at Wilson and Lake Michigan Drive. And that intersection about, is about as big as it's going to get. So now you need to start looking at connectivity and the ability for people to move around uh, without always having to go to that intersection. So when Blaine's came in, we said, you know, there's an opportunity here to acquire public right of way um, where the Southerly Meyer Drive is. Let's get that in public right of way. And we'll work out some of the details, and that's in the agreement that you folks have in front of you. Um, and then as Goodale property to the west comes in, uh, we've been working with them to pick up that public street, which I think we're going to call Standale Crossing, that Daryl worked with Meyer on, um, to let them name the road. Uh, so we will pull Standale Crossing to the west, into the Goodale property to the west of Meyer, and then run that north, and then bend it around as Ferndale extended. And that's what you've had in your master plan since 07. So Ferndale will eventually connect all the way down to O'Brien. And then you'll have Standale Crossing hitting this new four-way signal at the Meyer gas station. So the reason we're doing this is to build a public street network um, so that you can move without hitting that main intersection. Okay. And so, Dan, the, the vision for this is really easy and rock solid. It makes all the sense in the world. The application has been pretty hard in trying to figure out how do we turn kind of a private driveway and a little bit of a parking lot into a public road and that's why the the agreement has taken a long time to put together and there's probably some stuff in there that we're not super in love with um, I think both parties kind of just agreed at one point to say okay we're about in the middle of this let's uh, accept the terms that are there um, one of the terms is that they will resurface that for us so that even though it's not a, a curb and gut curb and gutter 36 foot wide street at least we're gonna have a new surface I got to imagine in eight or ten years we're probably going to be back to look at that and say what's the development look like to the west is this the right cross section should we adjust it in some shape and when development occurs to the west as, as Frank said it'll all be built to city standards so then you'll be connecting the dots with an area that's that's then curb and gutter uh, the proper storm sewer drainage sidewalk and all those things um, so do we have all the connecting right of way for that future road to the west that I know, I know we've talked about it for some time but is what what are I, I guess the next steps for us to make that connection a reality the next step will be when the Goodale group comes in and uh, proposes something on the land they own to the west of Meyer so they are well aware of the grid it's not really a grid it's more of a network of public streets and we've seen their latest concept drawing and it matches what we've been penciling in um, this Standale crossing public street will finish uh, right where the Goodale project can pick it up the uh, the service drive behind Meyer to the west that's just going to remain private for their own use um, so it's too close from a public safety perspective is, right. too close to the building it is we want to move uh, that Standale crossing will move and if I had a map up I'd show you folks um, but Standale crossing will go quite a ways into the um, the Goodale property and then Ferndale will come off where it currently is at, at uh, Lake Michigan Drive go down to where it currently dead ends uh, in the T and then it'll follow that sanitary sewer line that you can already see in place mm -hmm. and then it'll bend to the south so there will be developable property on both sides of that street. Okay. Um, but what the Goodales have sketched up so far that we, you know, is obviously just a sketch, but it matches with the city saying this is how we need to build a public street system in there. So the, the right of way that we're approving tonight, does that go all the way then to the end of the Meyer property? Yes. Okay, perfect. Can you clarify, you said that it's going to end up down at O'Brien? Yes. Where is that lining up with Kennewa then? Well, not that far west. There are quite a few, and, and that may be 30 years. Right. 
um, because there's quite a bit of property. But what we're putting, and you can see this in your um, your master plan for I think it was called sub area 4B. It's out on the web now if you want to go back to that report. We put a dash line in that followed the contours. It's essentially halfway between the county line and Wilson Avenue on O'Brien. Because if you go further west, there's actually quite a bit of grade change, and then it gets into wetland and floodplain, localized floodplain, uh, as you get closer to the county line uh, nearing O'Brien. So there's a dash line on there. Um, and we will fill in the blanks as projects come in over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Okay. But that we're, what we're trying to do, just see what the bigger picture is, when Alpine Avenue changed over, and Alpine's a little bit bigger magnitude than Standale, but what we missed on was the connectivity. So now what you see in your new master plan that's coming forward is, hey, we need the connectivity. So you'll see three mile dash line down to West River. You'll see a bunch of connectivity um, all over the place, that's going to be very difficult to do, any of those. But we're putting them in the book. Um, in Standale, we're trying to get ahead of that. It's still vacant land. Let's build the, the, the street network. Do it first, then it after. Exactly. Retrofitting is much, much harder than doing it as development occurs. To staff's credit, um, I, I think I've lost track of the dozens of conversations around what could this look like in different shapes, forms, um, connection points, what have you. So I, um, in my mind, listening to a lot of this, not all of it, but listening to a lot of it, um, went up here. It, it, it appears that we are, uh, um, we've, this is well thought out and this is going to be a good, uh, really the best solution for us at this point to solve the problem, just not just now, but in the future. You know, this has really turned into a good public-private partnership, too, because I think originally we were saying we'll have to put something in the CIP to replace what's behind Meyer, and, and it was going to be really expensive. We put some estimates together, and the best thing that possibly could have happened was Meyer and Blaine's and Goodale all agreed on the alignment, and now most of it will be done through, through, through the development and done the right way so that we don't have to shell out millions of dollars to build it from scratch. I think we're good on the Blaine's piece then? Yep, thank you. Okay. Good exp Just a good explanation. I mean, it's good to get it out there and hear it again. Mm -hmm. hey, if you want me to stick around, I can stick around. If not, I'll get out of here. Yep. Have a great okay. night, Scott. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we are 7 o'clock on the nose. Um, I will call the meeting to order. Um, ask Commissioner Groders to uh, please der deliver the invocation for us this evening. Heavenly Father, we gather this evening, um, this week of Thanksgiving, and pause to give thanks for the many blessings that we've been given. Thank you for our committed staff and leadership who work on behalf of our community. Please continue to protect those who serve. Our thoughts are with those who faced challenging circumstances this past week. Give them grace, peace, and comfort. Guide our conversations and give us wisdom as we work together to make decisions. In this time of great division and conflict in our nation, please keep us committed to serving with integrity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask everybody to stand. Join us for Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. If I could ask the clerk to please call the roll. Here, here. Present. 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 All right, next on the list is uh, approval of the minutes for the October 28th, uh, 2019. Any questions or dialogue around these? Elijah will accept a motion to approve and support. I'll make that motion. Motion from DeShane. So, do I have support? I'll support. Okay. All right. Third word supports. <laughs> Hold on, i got to get my notes in. DeShane. All right. 
Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Uh, those are adopted. And then November 18th, Commission Work Session Minutes. Entertain a motion for approval and support, unless there's discussion around them. Make motion to approve. Commissioner Gilbert, thank you. Do we have support? I'll support it. Support for Commissioner Kent. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Those opposed? All right. We have all of our minutes set. Any questions? Uh, actually, public comment? Chief Howell, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and then uh, no public, uh, so no public comment agenda items. Um, consent agenda items, let's jump to those. Um, any questions on the expenditures in the amount of $1,750,444.60? Any questions or dialogue around those? Okay. And then Northridge West Utility Financing Agreement, um, Scott covered for us, along some discussion from staff there. Um, the Northridge West, the utility extension as well, so that'll be the financing agreement. And then we also have in the consent agenda, um, the Walker Avenue Bridge Removal Finance Agreement. Um, we can accept a, an approval for motion on these unless there's further discussion needed. Can I just clarify? Um, so we're paying for this upfront and then we get the money back through the project. For well, which one? For I'll these and the consent agenda, the, yeah. the utility, actually the utility system is paying for it, so we're, we're not putting Grand, Grand, Grand Rapids in. Okay. And okay. then they'll receive the money back on that one. Okay. The, the, the uh, Walker Avenue Bridge one's a little bit different because there's not a development associated with that, so that'll be absorbed as a utility uh, cost to all the ratepayers in the system. That money okay. will be sp spread over the ratepayers um, once it becomes um, active. And as Commissioner Kent pointed out, that's the rate pairs for the water system only, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I like the idea of um, there's always discussion around this that, that Daryl brings um, and what is our appetite. And one, um, I think this, this commission has taken, just a reminder, taken a, a pretty strong stance over the years um, and decades um, of not borrowing ourselves into the, uh, the grave here. So we have an opportunity to leverage somebody else's um, financial strength. They have more borrowing power than we do. It's not tying up our, tying up our, uh, um, our money either, our ability to borrow. So, um, so I, I like how the systems, uh, we're able to leverage that, the water and sewer system. So that being said, uh, entertain a motion for approval on the consent agenda. Motion from Commissioner Heisinga. Do I have support? I'll support. Support from Commissioner Glanville. Uh, any other discussion? Sure. Oh, those, that was a quick whip, whip, neck whip snap there. I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I guess when you're building the road and the DPW gets the money back from the, they get the money for the roads, but yet the water system is paying towards this road project and I feel the money if it's going to go through the roads and the roads should pay for it and the roads will get their money it's back through <clears throat> their Act 51 but just my two cents okay fair enough <clears throat> all right so we have a motion from Commissioner Heisinger support from Commissioner Glanville any other discussion on this um, all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed Motion passed. Consent agenda is passed. Thank you. Next on the list is the resolutions. First on the list is resolution 19 542. This is the easement with consumers' energy uh, and road right away for Northridge Drive. Um, we covered this in committee the whole meeting. So I'll ask first are there any questions or other dialogue around this? Just, so just to clarify, this one there is a cost associated to this from consumers. So there's a four thousand dollar cost that will you know, upfront as part of the project cost to consumers, but that's their standard charge, I think, for crossing uh, a right of way. It's a one-time uh, fee to consumers. So I don't think Scott mentioned that, but uh, and again, thanks to Jeff for negotiating on our behalf um, with consumers on getting something that's acceptable and move this project forward. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion for uh, approval and support. I'll make a motion. Motion from Commissioner Heisinger. Do we have support? I'll support. Support from Commissioner DeShane. Uh, any other discussion around this? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Resolution 19-542 is passed. 
Next on the list is resolution 19-543, right-of-way easement for Meyer Blaines. Um, I believe they, Meyer and Blaines, did get some work done today, uh, paperwork. Um, so they, I would expect with uh, our approval tonight, there will be some dirt to uh, be turned very quick, and their intent was to actually have steel in the ground before winter set in. So I think they're going to be moving pretty quickly here. Um, <laughs> might be wishful thinking, but uh, going to move quickly. And on a side note, I actually, Corey and I ran out to uh, Saturday out to the Holland store, and that store is the exact same footprint of what we're going to see in Standale. And um, it's yeah, it's a new store. It's clean, but um, it's interesting. Everything that they said, they had some um, uh, more challenges with zoning out there. I believe it was with the township, if I remember right. Steve, there was we had some discussion around. I think it was zoning, um, but they um, got through that. Um, that store is everything that they said it would be, and um, um, nice traffic flow, um, and uh, just very well kept up even out on the grounds this time of year. So I'm excited about having them, but. That being said, I'll entertain a motion for approval for to approve the right-of-way easement for Meyer Blaines. Make a motion. Motion for Commissioner Gilbert to support. Support, support from Commissioner Groders. All those, any other discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution 19-543 is passed. Next on the list is resolution say it resolution 19-544 special assessment district for Northridge drive construction any other discussion around this I'll entertain a motion for approval then I'll make that motion motion of Commissioner Ken do we have support 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 for Commissioner Glanville any other discussion questions all those in favor please say aye, aye. aye. those opposed Resolution 19-544 is passed. Next on the list is resolution 19-545, Parks and Recreation Fee Change, changes, which we heard about in our committee of the whole meeting. Any other dialogue around this? If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval of this. I'll make that motion. Motion for Commissioner Groders. Do we have support? Support. Support Commissioner Heisinger. Any other questions, dialogue? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution 19-545 is passed. Next on the list is ordinances. Ordinance 19-653. This is the second reading to add new Chapter 22, Article 3, Section 22-88, and to amend Chapter 94, Article 1, Section 94-5, and Chapter 94, Article 18, Section 94-523 of the City Code of Ordinances. Um, any other dialogue around this? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the second reading of ordinance 19 653. Uh, make a motion for approval. Motion for Commissioner Gilbert. Do we have support? I'll support. Support Commissioner Groders. Any other dialogue questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance 19 653 is passed at second reading. Last but not least, any other public comment? Chief, how anything entertaining, engaging? <laughs> Getting cold out. Thank you for the wisdom there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, we'll jump to Commissioner City Manager comments. Um, we'll start to the left uh, tonight. Uh, Daryl? Uh, yes, a couple items. Uh, one, which I think is, is somewhat uh, exciting, is uh, we, we have received some interest in the Edison House from, an, a, from a property owner and received actually an offer on the property. Uh, the concern we, or not concern we have, but we have a process, our purchasing policy, obviously we have a process for disposing of property or um, you know, getting rid of uh, real property. So we have to have a publicly advertised sale for any property that we um, would like to dispose of or, or get rid of. Uh, so I guess what I'm asking, and we have to do that um, by such means as we'll provide the city with the greatest value and it requires prior, prior approval of the city commission, obviously. And so I guess what I'm asking is, it, is your permission or a motion to allow me to publicly advertise that for a limited amount of time, whatever Jeff feels would be appropriate, see if we receive any other interest in the property, and if not, um, then bring this back to you uh, for consideration. Uh, we can't just take an offer of somebody's um, uh, on the piece of property without going through a public process because it is public property. 
So if I could add some additional context, having uh, our police department presence here uh, um, probably will give some validity to this. Um, I've lost track of the number of times in the last um, four or five months we've dealt with squatters up there. And um, uh, unfortunately, um, it, it is a significant public safety hazard for a number of reasons. First and foremost, water and sewers turned off in there, but that doesn't seem to bother the squatters. Um, so then we have to have a uh, cleanup, um, and actually the county comes out and does that, and that's at charge. Um, so that's uh, not, not good for us either. Second is electricity is on in there, as is the heat, um, just to keep a uh, mild temperature. And I think it's, um, I looked the other day, I think um, uh, it's set at 50. Furnace is starting to go. You can hear the bearings making noise, and there's another part. The part was like 400 and some dollars. And there was some dialogue of, you know, do we bother putting that money into that part or not? And uh, I think we're going to see how far we can get with it. But at least there's some heat in the house. Um, but um, that also brings up the point of the electricity piece. Um, there's not a whole lot of care to the safety factor. And you have people living in something that doesn't have lighting outside of the basement, but has extension cords running up to the main level. You have human waste at times of being in there. Um, it's, uh, we gave this a try and this was November 1, 2001 was the day that we actually moved it. And, um, I just, it, it, it's tough for me to say, but it's also the right thing to do on behalf of the community is it's probably time for us to uh, part ways with that. Um, the, um, and I think the process that Daryl has lined out will uh, cover all the legal obligations that we have and uh, who knows, we might have something else come in, you know, for that too. So, but, uh, um, we have a business adjacent that is looking to expand um, and uh, that could provide us some, um, some very positive opportunities there too, if that would be the one that we um, end up taking. So um, I wanted to give that, Dan, I know you hit your mic quick and I know you get to drive by it all the time, so have at it. Well, I just, I'm curious, like you go through Jeff Sluggett and, and go through the, what we'd have to do legally and everything like that, but how are we gonna advertise it? Be, is it going to be the Grand Rapids Press on the computer? No, it, it just it has, just has to be publicly advertised sale. That's all our pol our purchasing policy requires. So we're comfortable, and Jeff is comfortable, if we just posted something on our website on our bids and notices section of our web page for seven or ten days, and and see if there's any. Um, I mean, we could we could go all out too if we wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary um, in this case. But it's, well, I guess when I see. And we're going to do something, and we got to notify so many people within the area of that pro whatever we're going to do that project or whatever. But to me, I guess this is—I don't know. I, maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but it's a city project, and it should everybody in the city. You know, we should try to get it to every, out to everybody. I don't know. What well, do you I think or. No, I, I think that, that by um, following the, the RFP process, um, going through the things that we legally need to do, I, it, it appears we're going to satisfy all those uh, requirements and demands. But I, I think the other um, thing, too, where have these people been for the last 19 years that might have interest in it? You know, it's been pretty evident that it's sitting there with nothing being done. That hasn't had the for sale sign on it out front. Um, we did have a gentleman, I want to say about two years ago, that right. came through as looking to subdivide the inside of that to multifamily homes. Um, I gave that gave us some cause for cringe of um, not only the cost, because you're going to have to put an elevator uh, in, into the building, um, and then the um, by code, and then the other is uh, um, just the sheer cost of updating that, getting that blacktop in there. And uh, um, I just I can't see somebody sinking half a million dollars plus into that getting that thing up to speed where it meets all the code and uh, um, ordinances that we have um, and it's and it's 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 tough but it, it, I'll tell you what what's even tougher is walking through it and looking to where it was 19 years ago and seeing where it's at now um, it's it's in, it's in bad bad shape I definitely agree we need to do something with it and but I'm thinking too how many people drive by there and go I wonder when the city's going to do something with that <laughs> or what are yeah. they going to do with it? No, it's a fair know. question. I almost yeah, like that, that but, horse left the barn when we were getting a lot of PR back in the, uh, the early 2000s. And you had um, some, some change with the his, historical commission. And uh, um, I think there was some steam that was lost over time with that, too. 
and um, just not being able to, uh, it's not a favorable um, at that time, I believe, and that's even so now, a favorable um, fundraising environment to be able to cover the cost of that. Well, Darrell, even though I got a lot of questions, I would make the motion that we move forward, have you check it out with Jeff's luggage, and see what we got to do to advertise it. With things still coming back to the commission, the final. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is just to be able to list it. Yep. Fire away. Um, can we put in the um, advertisement that um, we reserve the right to salvage any architectural in, uh, objects or anything that we want? Yeah, I think um, at some point, if we had an offer, you know, the offer we have on the table now, we we have that right, and we would reserve that right if we would entertain an offer. Absolutely, we're, it would be, we would get anything out of there we needed or was valuable would be certainly a condition. Okay. Good question. Um, I guess I just want to know more. I mean, I I'm not quite sure how this all works. So. Um, how is that zone? What's the possibility? I mean, you talk about a business expanding. What are we looking at there? How does that align with the master plan we're working on? That kind of stuff. I'm just curious where this falls into the bigger picture. And I guess I'd like that information before we make a motion to sell. I mean, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I'd like to know more about that piece of property and what's, you know, what the possibilities are before we... Yeah, that's that's. I mean, yeah. I know we talked about it at our last strategic planning session a year ago, and one of the one of the priorities was to do something with the Edison House, and we did receive the offer. We didn't solicit it; they came to us. So that's why I'm just presenting it to you because we only have 90 days to act on the offer, or they can rescind that. So that's why I'm here tonight. So, so the quick um, back and knowing the history of the site. Yeah, quick background of the house: it was uh, donated to us back in two. I want to say it's late 2000, somewhere in there, early 2001. Um, we end up moving it. Um, the developer at the time, the small patch of land it had on the corner, we were somewhat landlocked. And the, um, um, boy, a whole different city commission back then. I don't think Dan was, uh, it was uh, predated him and uh, different city managers, so forth. So it was decided then that that house um, would be moved um, so that developer could get the prime spot on the corner. It was moved down to where there's um, uh, the parcel it sits on right now. Um, I can't think of the zoning off the top of my head. Yeah, I think we rezoned it, but I would check on that because we we did not we created a zoning district. I'm sorry, I'll be brief. Uh, we created a zoning district several years ago called Public Semi Public. And it was related to cover parks and schools and those kind of things. Um, but I don't think we changed the zoning of that site to PSP. Um, it may still be agricultural or it might be an industrial. But we'll definitely get that information for you um, if this moves forward. Um, the site itself, most of it is fill. Um, and the historical house was moved onto this property. Um, it drops off pretty, pretty abruptly going to the south. There's quite a hillside there, and I, I believe that's a manufactured hillside. And then at the bottom, there's a large stormwater retention basin. So usable property there is limited. Um, master planning-wise, we did sub-area 1A, and we t um, that area is all master plan industrial. If I had my, su my suspicions, the... Um somebody picking that up whoever it may be knowing that um, um i can't think the exact usable land maybe three give or take acres roughly sounds about right if that um with that drop off and the retention uh, uh pond down there but where that's actually sitting at, so you've got the house up on the top there um that house before anybody could occupy it could be used somebody's gonna have to put a significant amount of money and you're talking four five hundred thousand 400 is just scratching the surface, I think. Um, so that being said, it's going to be awful hard for somebody to get that ROI back over time. So in, inevitably, I could see that that house, um, depending on the person picking it up, I think to um, Melanie's point of grabbing things out of there, I think the, the um, I don't think there's a long-term vision for that house staying up. So that's, that's the back story. And also, I think a lot of that property all drains, and it's, 
right there by Andy Egan's property and it crosses Waldorf and keeps right on going down to Indian Mill Creek. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of, you know, so like you say, that it, uh, there's, it's, there's, there's a slope there and it's, the water's still got to run and so and there's, you know, the businesses at the end of Waldorf, they've sold a lot of that sand out, took some of that. So things are going to be changing there and I would, by, from what I can see is an industrial, it's all going to blend together right there. So That's another growth here. And Frank, I'm almost positive that we did not, there was nothing special done um, since the move for that. It's been status quo since. I think we kind of, uh, when we dealt, uh, I'll, I'll definitely double check for you and I'll send an email out tomorrow, morning, uh, tomorrow morning with a couple of maps. But I don't recall, I think we consciously did not rezone that property to PSP. Even though it's 10 acres, the majority of it is down slope. And I, there was discussion about, is, is that a city park? Is it not a city park? So we just held off. I could be wrong, but I will update you guys in the, uh, in the morning. Yeah. Uh, and send you a zoning map. So what I'll say on that is, you know, I've, I've driven by that house a billion times. Um, and I have for many years we would drive by and just wonder what's what's going on with that house and it continues to kind of um, grow into worse shape and you know over the years it just continues to exist and nothing productive is happening there there's no uh, general practical use at this point so I I heard a motion from Commissioner Kent so I'd support that to uh, to move forward with the steps to put this out there um, I I think it's time to get some productive use out of the property there if there's a business that or anyone who wants to buy that property and make some good use of that frontage on one of our major roads then I'd love to see it you know we've got a lot of dead space there on three mile with those hills um, that you know we drive by and just look at just about nothing <laughs> so um, for my part I'd love to see a future with some productivity in that prime location um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, my take on it. So maybe what, uh, we're, so we have a motion and support, but to your, to your question is, it's going to come back to us, and we still have that right of refusal of what we want to do with it, but this at least for the, uh, the time frame of the offer, which has come in since last Monday's meeting, um, that uh, we actually have that, that we can, uh, um, let's go through, let's see what we're going to potentially get from offers from that, and then bring it back to the commission at that point. But I, I know for me, just uh, you, you go through whether it's DPW, PD, or both have been up there at the same time. It just it's getting very disheartening. I'm like, I mean, get, can we not do? Can we do better? And uh, um, there's just not much more we can do there. In the meantime, too, Frank will get that other information, more of the background information yeah. out. So at least we can continue to move around and still inform you with all the background info of what's there. Well, I think it's good to get the information, but I really think that Frank and Daryl's going to go out and get the information, talk to Jeff Sluggett, and hopefully, our, maybe not our next meeting, but very soon in the future, you could give us an update where we're at, and um, you know we can move from there. I guess is my thought. But uh, I'm with Gary, and you know it's been there, and the. You know, public funds and community funds were spent different back then than they are now, and it's, I would have to say, very much conservative now to compare. So, and so what can be done? And so, and I think that uh, it would be a good thing for the city to move on with it. Okay. All right, so we have a motion in support. Any other dialogue or questions? So our, the motion um, that we have on the table is to allow the city manager to publicly post the, um, the Edison House and land for sale um, following uh, the, the public guidelines we have at disposal of city property um, before any, anything is um, accepted or denied. Um, it comes back to the city commission. So good. All right, um, so I have motion support. Uh, no other questions or dialogue, it appears. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right.
Carol, you have the marching orders, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. And sorry, uh, it was a late notice on that, but I didn't want to let it fester for another couple of weeks here <laughs> we have over the holidays. Um, just two other items. Uh, one is uh, you may have noticed on the, the postings on the website and our social media today about the upcoming library uh, with expansion visioning session. So we're looking at that on 1210, uh, two different sessions, one in the afternoon and then one uh, from 5 to 7 uh, p.m. So I'm sure that will be shared quite a bit with uh, not only around the city, but also through the library and the uh, users at the Ice and Fitness Center and some of the senior uh, groups around the area as well. So uh, please share that and let people know about it. Um, should be a um, good, good uh, input session. Still work, working on the details of what, how it's actually going to function uh, once we get there, but we're pretty close on that as well. And then last but not least, uh, the DPW received delivery of their new Vector truck last week. So uh, if you want, I can try to have them have it here before the next meeting if you want to take a look at it. It's it's pretty darn impressive. <coughs> so, um, or if you get a chance to stop by back at EW sometime, check it out. It's uh, it's very impressive. That's it. Good. And have a great holiday uh, weekend. Thank you. Frank? One quick item. Um, as a follow-up to our master plan open house from last week, I think we prioritize that we need to get together and look at uh, what we're calling the top 10 list that's in your rough draft. I sent that out to you folks um, in the rough draft of the 2020 master plan. So on December 4th from 5.30 to 7 or longer if it needs to be, uh, we'll meet in this room and we'll go through those 10 plus the bonus item, uh, which was Panel Street, I believe. Um, number one on the agenda will be the Fenske site and then we provided a whole list. And I just talked to Chris Corey, our consultant today, and said, use that list and let's, uh, let's walk through those items and, uh, and get some uh, edits done, whatever needs to be edited. And for the Planning Commission, the City Commission to understand the content. Um, you know, there's 500 pages. I don't expect you folks to sit down and go through page by page. But the major content issues, it's very important that you folks in the Planning Commission understand what's in there. And we have some red lines ourselves. Uh, I'm going through that thing page by page and redlining that up. But you folks, uh, hopefully we can hit the top 10 plus one on the fourth. And if you can make it, great. If you can't stay for the whole thing, that's fine too. Um, you know, I know it's a busy time of year. But that'll be December 4th, 530 to 7 in this room. And that is enough. Thank you. Thank you. Dan? Enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend. Good. Um, I also attended the Master Planning uh, 2040 uh, turnout last week. It, it had a nice turnout. There was a lot of people from uh, Ward 3 very, very interested in seeing what was going on with the Finsky area. So uh, Frank and Dan and staff did a very nice job. And um, I was really pleasantly surprised to see people coming out and actually using their voice and filling out little more post-it notes. and. Um, just giving feedback, so. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Oh, thank you. Uh, Lena? I just have a quick question. What is going on on like Wilson, on the west side, by like Hall Street area? They're like doing like, a bunch of like drainage stuff, it looks like, maybe. And some of it's like running along the roadway, and some of it's going like more west in there. Mm, I'm not like, sure, but I could check out. It might be a drain okay. clean-out project that the road or drain okay. commission are working on, but I can check it out and let you, let everybody know. Okay. Thank you. I know. I don't. I've been by the, and because they don't, they got cranes out there and they got pads, and they're, even the little cranes are on pads. So mm -hmm. they don't move. That's what? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you, know, you can do it with I'll check, I'll check with Jake and our DPW uh, right away person and uh, see what he's, he, I'm sure he knows what's going on. So uh, I will shoot you guys an email and let you know. I got to back you up with my panels. Mm -hmm. Did Jake, do you know if Jake get the power poles taken care of? That were the, a lot of the short sawed off ones. I think he's still working on that and Gary has a meeting coming up with the reps from consumers uh, okay. regarding that. So I'm sure I'm sure they're not out of there yet. That would be too quick. Well, I, well, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it here. The other day I turned a corner at three miles in, in Bristol and on that southwest corner there's a couple pickups and trucks in there and a trailer with a whole bunch of short power poles. So if they got it done, kudos. I will let you know that as well. Thank you. Good. 
Anything else? No. Coming right. Um, just re reiterate the great uh, open house on last Wednesday. Thank you, Frank, for your work. It was much appreciated and for keeping law and order and <laughs> clarifying things for the for all the folks that came. I think they really appreciated um, you stepping in and stepping up and I'm sure you'll see lots of them as we go forward. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. I just want to say thanks for the work on the Blaine's right of way piece that we're getting ahead of that and learned our lesson from Alpine. So I appreciate the the work that's going into that and that it's moving ahead of schedule seemingly mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the other question I had is around the feedback on the strategic planning session that we had on November 4th um, I thanks for compiling all this I think Kendra did the infographic and it's you know as always fantastic she does such a nice job of putting things together visually um, so I guess my question here is like, what's our what's our next step? Are we taking the top, you know, are these our top strategic priorities? Do we want to take the top two from each section? Like, what, where are we with this, or what's our next step? I don't want to overspeak, but uh, no, I, I, I mean, it's it's there for your, you know, a summary of what's going on. And in the past, we've kind of used those as a that as a guide as we rolled into the next budget process and. I think, like Al said at the at the session, nothing on there is off the table. But right. the ones at the top are, will probably consume the most uh, the most time and effort. I would I would say that's that's why they're ranked that way. Uh -huh. uh, as most important as we work through the year and continue to do our our day jobs and everything, and then extra projects and CIP and, and budget and prioritize that way. Okay. So as we have the capital, um, my only thing to add to that would be the uh, the um, when we get to the CIP planning, which we'll do. Um, I think probably in February time frame, maybe right in there, maybe March, um, but give us that any uh, budget amendments. That's kind of that guy, just I would say very similar to what a master plan is if we're mm -hmm. going back to and measuring back to this is what we identified as priorities and where we want to go. So um, I think that's going to become a living, breathing document. But that's why I wanted to stay in the lane there for me. I think it's not it's not just a, okay, we have it and let's go do a bunch of things. Right. It's going to be this guide for a while until we uh, get to next year and go through that same mm -hmm. thing in the late fall. So one of the reasons I was asking is because I noticed um, affordable housing did not make the top priorities mm -hmm. overall but within its um, you know category of land use and future <coughs> developments it was number two so that's why I was curious like how are we looking at this are we looking at it per category are we looking at it overall um, and then my because some of the questioning I was thinking about um, I was at a the KCC advisory governing board meeting last week and their report on um, the community needs assessment for Kent County will be coming out shortly but um, one of the areas, of course, throughout the county that is an issue for us is affordable housing. Um, and so I just was wondering, you know, I just kind of got thinking about that and I was crunching some numbers between KCCA and some community data from Walker, um, you know, where we are, price points for affordable housing, what the cost of housing, you know, has happened since 2011 to 2017. Rents have gone up substantially. Um, homes have gone up substantially, but a lot of, um, you know a lot of wages have stagnated so when we look at you know walker is a place to live work and grow how are we making sure people can live here um, what does that look like um, and as we look to again the master plan and future developments and the companies that come in you know maybe at the edison house you know i think we need to be thinking about what kind of jobs come with those places mm -hmm. i mean i'm not you know i just want to point out like flexco their salary range is fine that you know people can afford to live in Walker if they're working at Flexo people who work at Blaine's not as much so when we look at you know the average salary is that an apple and orange though I mean right but those people but they're still they're full-time jobs that people can have and so does that I just think we should be keeping an eye on mm -hmm. you know what does it cost to live in Walker and you know, do we have the right kinds of jobs? I mean, just keeping an eye on all of that sure. stuff, especially as housing continues. I mean, average cost of housing in our area went up from 2011 to 2017. Um, in 2011, it was just under 120,000, and now it's just over 200,000. So, like I said, there's been substantial changes in the cost of housing, and I just want to make sure that we as a community are keeping abreast of providing housing for all of our residents. 
um, and understanding that, again, you know, just keeping an eye on where are we and do we need to do something as a commission to perhaps, um, you know, I mean, we talk about, you know, and through, through the state, people talk about minimum wage, you know, what should the minimum wage be? Well, is that something we should consider as a commission is what, you know, how we support that if we're looking to how we support our, you know, we really don't have any, we have zero jurisdiction though on minimum wage. Well, I understand that, but I wonder what our position or our conversation with our state legislator might be. I mean, just as a thought, like yeah. I said, I'm looking at them crunching some of these numbers and um, he said, I just think we need to keep an eye on these kinds of things so mm -hmm. that we are not outgrowing our community no, and we're enough. serving everybody. And I know that county uh, housing, I, Steve, I see you leaning forward. You want to jump in? Yeah, no, I, it's, so it's an interesting conversation and I think that affordable housing definitely has a role in the discussion and I think that for the part of the strategic planning session it's just a way to kind of get on the books all the things that we're thinking about and for us to kind of push forward as part of the discussion so I don't think that the affordable housing issue being second in one category says that okay so it's it's below X, Y, and Z in priority I think it's just a matter of okay, well now we know kind of where it ranks with others and how to navigate those discussions amongst each other as colleagues and as we prioritize our own um, issues that we're going to push forward in the city um, as elected officials. Um, where it pertains to the minimum wage stuff, it seems like that's more of an individual priority that we can each advocate to our state legislator and the discussions that we have as individuals. Um, I don't think we as a body, with us not having really any jurisdiction over how minimum wage is set um, would take action on that and from my perspective because where the way that I see it we probably don't need to take action on things that we don't have authority over um, those are again something that we can advocate as individuals but not necessarily something that I see us as a body taking up so it's just a sorry it was just a thought like yeah. thinking out loud kind of like like I'm, I'm not opposed to having you know Blaine's come in or the jobs that Blaine's provides right. and the salary they provide but I think we need to be aware of that as right. we're drawing companies to Walker and we like I said just mm -hmm. talking about Edison House that piece of property well I don't know who's planning on expanding in there or what kind of jobs they might provide and things like that I just want to make sure that we keep our community you know we need we need to be able to provide right and if we can't control how much a company, I mean, we can't control how much right. they pay. So what can we do to advocate for that or support right. that? Right. So that's my point. And like no. I said, I mean, it's certainly not something we need to like get too far in the weeds on. I just wanted to kind of throw right. it out there so that we are thinking about these things moving forward. Right. Well, in that county, the, the, the county, the, the, it's really it's primarily the city and the Fry Foundation funding um, the majority of that um, that study so as that comes out in 2020 um, that may cause us going back to that document as a living breathing document for us we may readjust priorities at that point in time so so I want to see what uh, that'll be a good you know potential catalyst for that at that point yeah yeah just trying to bring it up Thanks. okay Fair enough. Mr. Yeah. No, um, really good strategic planning session like everyone else said. I think it was nice to see so many folks from the third ward of the city come out and um, voice their concerns and I think that has spurred what will be a uh, lively discussion at our meeting to uh, make sure that we kind of uh, reflect that we had heard those voices and uh, that we're working towards a goal that everyone can be happy with in terms of the way that we're developing in South Walker. Um, I will make another plug for the uh, work session on that um, on December 4th. Um, if anyone can make it, it should be very a very lively and important discussion to the way that we're uh, structuring our master plan. Um, other than that, I think that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Clerk? I have a couple things. Um, first, um, just to d confirm, December 16, we have somebody for our third Monday, correct? For work session? Uh, yes. Fire? Uh, fire. Fire? Okay. Fire department, yeah. All right, and then um, so December 9th, commission meeting, December 16th, fire presentation, and then December 23rd. Um, is everybody planning on a commission meeting that night? Okay, just checking. I think let's, let's take that by, because uh, depending where we come uh, in the next week, um, we get to the 9th, that's... We can talk about it on the 9th. Yep, just yeah. wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Okay. Um, Closely, it's close to the holiday, but yeah, absolutely. that's Understood. fine. You know, um, 
Jessica will be attending. I'll be in California. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> See my grandbaby. Um, as for the clerk's office, um, the Bureau of Elections director that has only been there a year, retired, announced her retirement as of 1231. And our governor's very rapidly replaced her today, one week from her notice, with somebody in her department, or her reign, I should say. Um, our, and then they did also announce that online voter registration went live on Friday. So if you know anybody that needs to register to vote, um, they're encouraging anybody to try it out. Um, they're kind of doing a soft rollout right now with it, but that's pretty exciting for Michigan. And then we're plan planning to mail our absentee applications for our ballots for March, December 18, because all of the clerks are not wanting to get them in the Christmas rush. We usually have about three weeks that we mail them out and then we get them back and then we mail our ballots the third week of January. Um, we don't have our applications yet. It's kind of up in the air. Um, we're kind of fighting with the Bureau of Elections. From 2008 when I was here, 2012, 2016, we always had a presidential primary application. And for some reason, um, the state, or I should say the governor's office, is wanting to do a president uh, application for the presidential primary that states that you either pick out, pick just the primary or you pick the primary and the general election and i totally disagree with it because the primary you will select a democrat a republican or a non-party ballot and if you also pick that you want that application saved for the november ballot then that criteria that you have selected stays on that same application for november and i i object i object to that because First of all, they're supposed to destroy those after 24 months um, if you choose a Democrat or Republican ballot, and where our normal applications are retained for six years. So to say the least, I've been dealing with Lansing a lot in the last couple weeks, <laughs> and will continue to. So that's about it. Okay. Kind of lively. All right. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, two quick things. One, um, right before the commission meeting tonight, um, I ran over our, um, we have a retiring uh, fire captain that has served this city since December 1st, 1977. Um, Greg Hansen has uh, um, overseen the uh, um, um, station two down in Standale for a long, long time. Um, you know, it's just interesting too when you see somebody out of the setting that he also reads, uh, spent some time at Zinzer, uh, volunteering of his time and just, just kind of quietly, just, uh, just a, a very stand-up guy. But you think we, um, uh, as they were having pizza over there, just had everybody go around the room. It was their last actual uh, um, officers meeting um, that he'll be attending. Uh, he'll actually be at our, um, our um, employee luncheon um, as well. So get a chance to recognize him then. But uh, um, had everybody go around the room and uh, a lot of a lot of jokes of where they were and some weren't born yet and all that so you just think I mean that's that's a, that's that's a long long time of service and uh, um, and uh, seen a lot of things over the years so very grateful um, uh, to be able to pop in and uh, congratulate him in front of his peers so and last but not least um, last Wednesday or Thursday we had uh, um, Fox 17 in here um, they reached out to us um, the morning show did um, and uh, had wanted to do all the things that they've been hearing going on in Standale and uh, um, one of the morning news anchors was driving by Walkerview quite a bit and uh, precipitated a um, two and a half hour visit between City Hall, um, went out with a camera person out to Walkerview, Northridge as well as um, Standale and uh, so I would expect sometime this week next at the latest they'll have a, a very nice piece I mean they, they were here a long time did a lot of taping and uh, looking forward to seeing some positive PR for the, uh, the city from that so um, that's all I have there um, any other questions or I'll entertain a motion to adjourn I'll make a motion to adjourn motion of Commissioner Kent uh, do you have support? support all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. those opposed we're adjourned